I want to thank Rookie Pones for requesting this commission of a story. Uh, this is story number four for the channel, and Rookie said bartender's choice, so this is what came out of that. Eyes open to the fog, seemingly floating amid the blackened form of the entity, plumes of smoky fog silently whirling around her, a woman sat behind her knees, those eyes piercing out above them with a piercing focus, appearing out above them with a piercing focus. She was waiting for the moment when reality changed. She missed it every time before, but she knew it must be true. There must be some point between dying and awakening in which the world would choose its shape and form. She waited in the empty sound of nothing until... Step. 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 Like a smoothly polished dress shoe tapping on a stone walkway overgrown with crabgrass. Linda ignored the sound, keeping her eyes focused on the roiling fog in front of her. She could feel a tightness in her chest and the familiar sensation of a heartbeat creeping up on her. A swirl in the fog caught her eye as the feeling of terror came closer and a firm hand clapped down on her shoulder from behind. Don't touch me! The girl was panting through the fear. No one was nearby and the terror faded. Linda saw the landscape unfold before her. Two long stone walls with cracks filled in by thick shrubs on either side of her of her view went on into the fog like an infinite hallway in a hedge maze. She missed her moment again. She would not be staying to catch it a second time as the feeling of fear started to rise again. She had to stay moving to avoid being caught and so turned around and ran smack into a tall, lanky man with an old antique suit. He smiled wide, showing brilliantly pearly teeth. His jacket and pants were nicely ironed and gave his body a square frame. Everything was clean and polished, from the tucked-in dress shirt to the black leather belt and wingtip shoes. He tipped a crooked gray pipe hat, while his grin lingered a little too long, disquieting Linda until finally he introduced himself. I am Theodore, he said in a low voice which sounded very kind. Not at all what the girl was expecting. Linda, how long did you see me sitting here? You have only just arrived, young lady. I did not notice how long we were waiting. Linda looked up and down the corridor, seeing nothing before a sheet of fog on either side. Above the wall, more fog, and not even a moon could be seen. Knowing that she couldn't bother climbing anything in this realm, she started to follow the wall away when she was stopped by a click of Theodore's shoe. He looked at her with some concern, fidgeting with his cuffs for a moment before clearing his throat. Have you been in the fog very long, Linda? Theodore has been here for countless ages. I haven't been here very long. I can't even think about spending ages after what I've already been through. She recalled being chased down by all manner of murderous vagrants and vicious scoundrels. She looked at her arms and legs, covered in thin, pale scars, marking places that were severed, cut, or ground away by deadly tools of torture. Often they still pained her when she came to on the other side of death. She recalled each wound inflicted in mortal fashion, more than twenty. More than fifty times she had run for her life only to be cornered and flayed alive. She shuddered and leaned on the wall. Theodore stepped closer with deliberate, thoughtful paces to stand nearby and chat. It's all so much, dimly remarked Linda. No matter how tired I get, I can't rest. The pain lasts so long. The only thing you can do about it is exercise. This corridor is a good place for a walk. Have you been here before? Oh yes, a fair few times. Sitting around and sulking never got old Theo anywhere. The way out is there. Linda almost smiled, but seeing Theodore's expression stopped her. He hung a long, thin arm in the air with a bony hand and sharp at the elbow, pointing the way forward. He seemed to be frowning, almost sad-looking, but he had sounded perfectly content when speaking. 
After considering the man's words, Linda began walking in the direction Theodore had suggested, and he followed alongside, keeping pace with long, deliberate strides. The fog grew thicker, lightly pulling on Linda's clothes and brushing her arms. She was almost used to it, but still shuddered from time to time at the feeling like insects coyly toying with her. Are you thinking about the trials, miss? Linda inhaled deeply to restrain the pain in her throat. I have so many scars. I've lost limbs. Each time I come back, it makes me cry. It will fade away eventually. The towering man lifted his dress shirt to show a wide black scar like a grisly smile across his belly. The surrounding flesh was similarly pale as Linda's own scars. This was the last one that hit me. It was a lot worse around 30 moments past. Tucking his shirt back in, Theo looked at, the silver wa at a silver watch and nodded thoughtfully while the sound of many crows rang in the distance behind. Right on time, I'd say, he murmured, and at that moment a horrifying wail echoed down the corridor and into Linda's ear. The feeling of terror was approaching. She could no longer stop herself as she broke into a sprint. Theodore dashed alongside, along beside her, and another wail and a stranger's scream resounded over the sound of the air, of air rushing past. The fog grew even thicker, coiling around Linda's legs and whispering rumors of her demise all around her. The incredible pressure of her heart beating in her skull was enough to make anyone panic, but all she could do was run ahead, peering deep into the distance and only seeing fog. When she looked back to see Theo, she was in time to witness the final glimpse of his form being consumed by the curling shadowy tendrils of the entity. She threw her shoulders forward while the wailing grew. Suffering screams and disembodied crow calls fell all around her and she screamed in the cacophony before running face first into a solid wall. Linda shot up from the ground. There was no telling how long she had been down there. Blood poured down her face from a gash in her forehead. She threw herself at an old door switch, pulling the handle down and crying out unintelligibly for the door to open while the sound of the terror blocked her in. The beating of her heart shook her senseless, and then she saw it coming through the fog. One long, gaunt hand that looked like it could have been just bone reached out for her. She fell in her spot, letting the door handle fly up while she cowered and sobbed, crying into onto her bloody cheeks. Clachak. The girl looked up through her teary eyes to see Theodore standing over her. The mechanical door opened up. A rusty slide. <sighs> the mechanical door opened up with a rusty slide. Linda crawled out from under the switch and got to her feet, asking, how do I even thank you? Fwack! You do not. Linda's tear-filled eyes turned empty as shock ran through her body. Theodore brought his arm down, lodging a wicked knife in the girl's shoulder and cutting deep into her clavicle. With a sharp yank, Theodore dislodged the blade, throwing Linda's stunned body to the ground. She stared up into the fog while she was torn apart and cut into ribbons. With each piece carved out of her, she fell deeper into the fog, watching the black swirls become darker and darker until finally all sensation in Linda ceased. Eyes opened to the fog. <sighs>